screen. Okay. So we're creating our seat, whether it's against the wall or support underneath the knees. And just take a moment. You might even want to, I've liked this where I'm getting my hands, I have my hands on the blocks rather than on my arms, which is nice. So I'm not generating any more heat than necessary. And of course, you don't have to have crossed legs. You could just flop your legs out or one leg out, but make sure that you feel comfortable. I like sitting with my legs crossed, but if you don't like it, then find somewhere else to be. Maybe a couple of soft neck rolls to open up the shoulders. Maybe some soft shoulder rolls. Anything that feels good as you wiggle your way into a seat. And you're welcome to keep your eyes open if you'd like. And you could even take a moment, I like doing this every once in a while, to just kind of look around your room and orient yourself. Where you are in relationship to <laughs> other beings, <laughs> in my case, and objects. And it's kind of fun to just kind of look around and notice all your own tchotchkes and stuff that you keep in your space. Then once you feel oriented to your space, maybe close the eyes or create a soft, fuzzy gaze out in front as we move through our senses. And we're going to start with senses on the skin. So just start with the top layer of the skin. Maybe feeling a breeze or where your clothing is touching the skin. Do you have any little tingles or anything? And then peel back one more layer so you're feeling right underneath the skin. So anywhere where the muscles might be pulling or are sore. Feel a little fatigued. To see if you can stay with the muscles for a moment. Feel back the next layer, feeling ligaments and the bones. Starting to feel the weight of the body. Anything that could be I mean, giving you a little bother or feels not so comfortable in places that maybe do feel comfortable. And continue to peel back and we'll go to the organs. Maybe noticing if you had some something to drink or eat this morning, so your digestion. Maybe feeling the heartbeat. I'll come back to the lungs in just a moment. So once you've oriented yourself with how your body's feeling, we'll move on to the light filtering behind the eyelids, the weight of the eyelids on the eyeballs if the eyes are closed. Moving to what you can hear around you. Noticing sounds that are outside of the room, if there are any. And then begin to slowly draw attention to sounds in the room.
And then take a moment to listen to the, for the sound of your own breath. And go to taste in the mouth. Like you ate or drank or maybe not much. And as we shift to smell, We're going to start to stretch the lungs by taking deeper and deeper breaths. And in summer, it's encouraged to breathe out through the mouth if you're feeling heated. That we're slowly developing a lengthening of the inhale. So you can start to feel the body stretch from the inside out. Take maybe three or four more breaths with each inhale, trying to expand the capacity of your lungs. Starting to feel the stretch from the front of the chest to the sides, to the back. And when you think that you fully expanded your lungs on the inhale, try and take another little sip in of breath. really feels like you're getting the full capacity of your lungs. <sighs> One more breath like that, stretching. <sighs> and then we're going to start our counted breath eventually doubling the length of exhale to inhale. And we'll just start with a count of four as you inhale. So on your next inhale, we'll breathe in for one, two, three, and four. And then as you're exhaling, try and breathe out for five, maybe through the mouth, four, three, two, little press out for five. Again, inhale for one, two, three, and four. We'll exhale again for five, four, three, two, one. This time inhaling for four, one, two, three, four. And we'll lengthen the exhale to six, five, Four, three, two, one. Inhale, four. Exhale, six, five, four, three, two, one. This time we're gonna inhale for a count of five. Inhale, one, two, three, four, five, and exhale for eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Again, inhale for five. And now try and double the length of your exhale for 10, nine, eight, seven, six, Five, 
four, three, two, last little press out one, inhale five. And on your own, exhaling for 10. Two more rounds on your own. Maybe that five to 10 is too long and you wanna go back to a four to eight ratio. You're slowly letting air out of the balloon without the obnoxious sound. When you've gone through this last round, you can release the counted breath. Go back quickly, going through your senses one more time as we sit. Noticing shifts, changes. Then we'll simply lift the left arm and rock off to the side, getting a nice big stretch in the side waist. Switch sides, five breaths. Using that expanding breath, trying to press into the right side body. Come back through center and this time a twist. Switch sides. And come back to center and interlace the fingers behind the skull. And just let the chin drop to the chest or whatever feels best for your neck. We just want a slight opening to the back of the neck. So if the heavy arms and really weighting the head is good for you, do that. If it's not good for you, then find something that feels better. And you can always press the head back into those interlaced fingers. See if you can sense stretching from the back of the neck down the spine. And let the arms drop back down. So that was five counts. We're gonna do it again with counts of four. This time we're gonna inhale up for one, two, three, four, four off to the side for one, two, three, four, center. And to your second side, one, two, three, four, center. And twist, one, two, three. Or untwist, just to your second side. 
center, interlace the fingers behind the head, chin to chest. One, two, three, four, let the arms drop down. And then we'll do it for counts of three, lift up one, two, three to the right, one, two, three to the left, one, two, three, twist right, one, two, three, twist left, one, two, three, center, interlace the fingers behind the head, one, two, three. Now for counts of two, let the arms come down. Inhale up, one, two, off to the right, one, two, off to the left, one, two, twist, one, two, twist, one, two, interlace the fingers to the head for one, two, last one, arms come down, and we'll just all do it for one. Up for one, to the right for one, center, and to the left for one, center, twist, and twist, hands to the back of the neck, and chin to the chest. Great. We'll warm up for the spine and the shoulders. We'll move all of our stuff out of the way, and then we're gonna come to lying on the stomach. And an option here, sorry dogs, would be if you wanted some padding for on the belly, if you wanna work with some digestion, go right ahead. And you're welcome to bring your blocks with you. So you could lie on a blanket. And the blanket would be just below the rib cage, so it's really on the stomach. And feel free to pigeon toe the feet as you let the head come down. Take your time to get comfortable. So if you wanted some pressure for the digestion. You can put the blanket on your belly if you under your belly. If you don't, you can skip it. You can turn the toes in and the feet wide. And then if it's available, if you've got some space out in front so that eventually you might want to extend the arms out. Feel free to wiggle as much as you want. And then once you're down and you're somewhat found something that at least is, whether it's not comfortable, at least it's sustainable, we're going to do five long deep belly breaths where you're inhaling into the diaphragm. So it feels like you're pressing your belly into the floor and then exhaling, softening. So practice five belly breaths. Inhale. Fill up as much as you can and exhale, soften.
And once you've done five belly breaths, you're gonna slide the right knee onto the side like a frog. If that's not quite right, bring your leg down more. If you can get the knee in line with the hip and then the heel in line with the knee, this is another place or somewhere where if you did have that blanket, it might feel good to support underneath the leg. And once you're there, notice that if you turn your glute on, if you're squeezing, see if you can relax, maybe even wiggle around. Maybe you wanna take that left leg wider or closer so it's more comfortable for the hip. And then from here, we're gonna add in a shoulder stretch by reaching the right arm out and then feeding the left arm underneath the gate of the right arm. You could do quite a bit of support here. You could bring a block to the forehead. You could support underneath the arm. If you want support there. You can wiggle yourself forward, but take your time and it should feel like a bit of a stretch on that left arm. I like to wiggle myself forward, which might mean that you need to change where your hip placement is. Maybe some support for the forehead. Once you've found it a suitable arrangement, take another three or so breaths. We're gonna move this into a twist by rolling onto that left hip. Maybe you just wanna roll onto your left side, or maybe you wanna peel the chest open, reaching the right arm to the side. And you can more bend the knees or extend the legs. Go ahead and start to unwind. Back to the belly. You need to scoot yourself back again and we'll pause neutral on the stomach. Second side, sliding the left knee out to the side. Wiggling around, support underneath the knee or the hip. Especially if that hip is quite a bit higher, it might be good to bring a blanket even to the hip crease. Fill that space between the ground and your hip.
we'll slide the left arm out and feed the right arm underneath, reaching towards the left side. Taking the support here for underneath the head. Got my bolster close on this side. After another breath or so, when you feel ready, you can start to roll onto that right side. Maybe twisting all the way open or halfway, but it should feel comfortable. We're staying in our twist a little bit longer. Another breath or so. And you can pull your way back. Find your neutral on your belly. Toes could be pigeon toed. Maybe you want to take the arms wide into the full pronation. And then we're going to move to a child's pose. If you have your bolster or blocks, now's a great time to get them and have them close. So you press your hips back. So one thing you could do would be to support with maybe a blanket underneath the chest because we're going to stay here for about eight breaths or finding that bolster and sliding it. Round two, remember to take the arms wide. If it's available, maybe you want to slide the hands behind you and palm face up. Playing with the back breath here as you inhale, trying to stretch the back side of the lungs up and exhale, soften the front side of the body. And remember, anytime that you start to feel heated, feel free to breathe out through your mouth or in through your mouth or mouth and nose, continuing to regulate the heat in the body. We're going to shift to reaching the arms out and finding all fours with the big toes still touching for our cat cow. It's going to be a more dynamic cat cow. Once you've got the hands 
and perhaps taking a little bit more space so your hands could even be wider because your knees are so wide. And maybe the big toes are touching. And then we'll lift into our cow pose, stretching out the front side of the body, lifting the tailbone. Just look forward rather than up so you could still have length on the back of the neck. And then as you curl the tailbone under and push the ground away, shift your hips to the right and reach back. Good stretch in the side waist. And then you come back to center. Breathe in, take maybe two breaths here. Switching sides, tuck, press back. And going at your own pace, if you want to go more quickly through your dynamic cat-cow here, shifting left and right, go more quickly. If you want to be slow, be slow. Once more each side. And we'll come forward to all fours. We're going to swing the legs around. Back on your bottom. Getting off of the knees for a moment. Wiggle. Here's where we're going to pick up our strap. And you can bring two blocks. We're going to block the knees as the legs are together. And I'm putting mine at an angle. So it's just the corners that are underneath the knees. And naturally, my feet kind of want to curl. So I'm going to actively maybe even separate them and try and pull the pinky side back. And then I'm going to strap my feet. So go ahead and strap your feet. And you're going to let yourself come forward. You can let the head start to hang if that feels okay. Another option, since you have the blocks underneath the legs, is to take both sides of the strap together, bend the elbows, and support the forehead, because we want to round the back. Press around to see how you can get there with your strap. Maybe the elbows are bent. Maybe it feels OK to come forward. And hopefully starting to feel an opening at the low back and maybe through the spine. We'll go back to our back breathing. Imagining that you're pressing between the shoulder blades on the inhale and softening the throat, front side of the body on the exhale.
would be a bit longer of a hold. Opportunity to notice where you're allowing your body to relax too much. For me, it's always the toes turning in towards one another. So I have to keep remembering to flex back or not letting my knees flop out, the engaging. So there's some engage and play which, between relaxation and engagement. We're going to hold for another seven long deep breaths. One more breath. And then slowly either peel or press yourself back up. Keeping your strap close, we're gonna move the blocks to the right and left, and then make your way onto your back. Maybe you want to windshield wiper the knees once you're there. Or hug the knees into the chest, but we'll just pause. Maybe wiggle the hips. Could extend the legs for a moment. And let ourselves rest after that long hold. If you can, palms face up mini break. And then we'll slide the right knee and we're going to hug the right knee into the chest. Feel free to squeeze with your strap. In just a moment, we're going to strap the right foot. So here's a great time to point and flex the right foot or roll through the ankle. And then go ahead and strap the foot and then press the leg out and up. Bend and straighten the leg as many times as you need to. Remember that the legs can stay wide. They don't need to be together. We're trying, trying to create lots of space. Maybe you want to make little circles, just get some movement or bend and straighten the leg a few times. We're going to take both sides of the strap into the left hand. We're going to bring that right leg across the body. If you have a block close, you might want to Place the block there to let the leg rest on as you roll to the left. 
allowing the leg to land on something. If you're used to bringing your leg all the way ground, this could be a good time to play with the block. Let's get the hip a different type of stretch. As much or as little twist in the upper body as is right for you. And you could bend that lower knee. You could even bend this top knee if your leg feels like that's better. And we're gonna hang out here. Trying to see how expansive you can be. And then how soft you can make everything touching the floor. From here, you can release that strap and just slide it off. And then we're going to continue to roll to the left and curl up in a ball on the left side. Keeping the strap where it is, where if you'd like. Now push the chest up and bring the left elbow underneath the left shoulder, allowing the left side of the body to drop down towards the floor. And then the head to drop down. If you wanted to, you could slip the block underneath the rib cage or underneath the shoulder for support, if that feels okay. But we're trying to let the rib cage drop down and feel free to extend the legs if that's better. I'm gonna get the sensation of the side waist dropping down to the ground. And if it's okay for the neck, let the head hang. Always walk the hand around, reach, support in a way that's best. Continuing to let the rib cage sink down towards the left. And then we'll come up. Let yourself roll onto your back. And knees come in and we'll start on the second side, hugging the left knee in. Right leg is extended, pointing and flexing that left foot. And we'll capture the sole of the left foot and kick out and up. Bend and straighten as many times as you need to. Shoulders nice and heavy. Stay there for another breath. Or when you're ready, lead the left leg across the body for your twist, opening up as much as feels good for you on this side.
continuing to soften things touching the ground or your prop. Staying for an extra breath or two, or if you're ready, we'll bring the legs together. Continue to roll to your right and then pressing up onto your side to let the chest drop down to the right. Legs extended or knees bent. There's a little bit of pressure pushing away so you don't pinch the shoulder or collapse into the shoulder. Big breaths, trying to expand and ex that bottom rib cage. One or two more breaths. And then from here, you're just gonna roll onto your back. If you feel like you need support underneath the knees, you've got your blocks. Making your way there. If you need another twist, go right ahead. Hug in. And then trying to drop down onto the back, palms face up. You could even raise the arms above the head to get air circulating in your armpits too. And then we're gonna practice one more type of breath, which is the cooling breath. So it's called Satili Pranayam. And not everyone can roll their tongue or curl their tongue together to make the shape sort of like a straw. But if you can, you're gonna curl your tongue and stick your tongue out a little bit. So you have this, straw, and you'll inhale and exhale through your curled tongue. If your tongue doesn't curl, you can also purse your lips, drawing cool air into the body. And pressing everything back out. Go ahead and try five of those breaths. Scotch like this. One more. And release. From here, feel free to stay on your back as long as you wanted. You can come up to a seat. Ah. 
I really liked that sound. I thought it was hilarious. Thank you. Weird. Then once you come up, if you're coming up, feel free to roll through the neck and the shoulders. We'll do a really simple ending, nice big stretch up. Placing the hands on the heart or together in the lap, whatever feels good. As we send gratitude to each other, as we got to share this practice together. Build some gratitude for yourself. Thanking yourself for doing your practice. And acknowledging all the traditions and teachers that have brought these different tools for us to use. Have a super rest of your day. Thanks. Thank you, dear. Yeah, thank you.